A reading from the book of Isaiah. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals? that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child, and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See, God, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. When he said above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings, these are offered according to the law. Then he added, See, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me, according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of Christ. 
that day when the angel Gabriel comes to a young woman named Mary and tells her that she is to bear Jesus, God with us, Emmanuel, the Son of God. Normally on this day here at St. Mary Magdalene's, we have pews full of people and we are singing hymns and we are processing and there's a sense of uh, taking a moment away from Lent because this feast day falls in Lent more often than it doesn't. We put on the white vestments, we put all the candles on the altar, and there's a sense of joy as during Lent we look not toward the cross, but we look to what comes first, which is the Incarnation, which is the coming of God into our midst in the person of Jesus. And that, of course, leads to the cross and leads to resurrection. But this is the first moment when God signals that God will come amongst us. But we are, obviously, in unusual times, and just a small handful of us are gathered here to celebrate this feast day. But we are glad to be able to have the technology to celebrate this with you as well, and to invite you at the time of the communion to make a spiritual communion, to join with us, if not in body, in heart, in mind, and in spirit. Many years ago, I was part of a small workshop, preaching workshop, given by the Reverend Fleming Rutledge, who was a very fine uh, preacher in the Episcopal Church in the United States. And she gave us this reading of the angel Gabriel, a familiar reading, and she gave us about half an hour to go off by ourselves and outline a sermon, and then come back and share with the group what the outline of the sermon, what the point of the sermon would be. And to a person, each one of us had outlined a sermon about Mary's saying yes, about Mary's assent to God's invitation to the angel Gabriel. And she said, that's fine, but what you've missed, all of you, you've missed God. You've missed the fact that it's God who takes the first initiative. It's God who comes to Mary and invites her to be the mother of God, the one who brings Jesus into the world. And I've never forgotten that, because it was a powerful reminder that whatever we do in our human ability, our human state, it's always God that gets there first. It's always God who acts first. We are only ever able to respond to God because of God's prior grace, his prevenient grace, his grace which goes before us. And so in this time, as we are isolated from one another, as we are missing the routines of everyday life, as we are concerned for those who are ill, as we are praying for those who have died and those who mourn, as we are concerned for those who are isolated, and as we find new ways to form community, where is God? Where is God in this time and at this moment? I do not believe that God has sent this virus upon us like a plague. The, re the re reasons we are in this moment are complex, and scientists will in due course be figuring out what happened that we find ourselves in this moment. But this I do know that God is right here in this moment with each one of us, that God got here first, and that with all of the, the uncertainty and the anxiety and the fear and the disruption 
and all of the emotions and concerns and prayers that are swirling about each one of us and within, within each one of us, that God is there. And God is all, always making a new thing. God is always eking out new life in the midst of death. That is the way of God. That is the way of death and resurrection. And so as I see people reaching out in care for one another in new and creative ways, as I feel and see people's need to pray and to be spiritually centered and deepen, as I see the way in which the crisis like this brings out the best of humanity and coaxes us towards new life and coaxes us towards, re towards redemption and reconciliation, there is God in this moment. Today we give thanks for Mary's yes, that yes which brought Jesus, the babe of Bethlehem, the one who taught and healed and cured, admonished and encouraged, and ultimately died and rose for us. We give thanks for that yes, but what's more, we give thanks to God for God's presence, for God's grace, for God's first act by which we live and move and always have our being. Thanks be to God. Let us now confess our faith as we say together the nice evening. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things physical and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten of God made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us all worlds are salvation. And was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us in the conscious part. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again in glory to judge both the wicked and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, and the Lord the Giver of the who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe in the holy Catholic and apostolic Church. I acknowledge my baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Rejoicing in the company of Our Lady, let us now turn to God in prayer. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear and have mercy. For justice in all the earth, that with a mighty arm God may scatter the proud, cast down the haughty, and lift up the low. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear and have mercy. For the hungry, that they may be fed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear and have mercy. For those who hunger after righteousness, that they may be filled with good things, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear and have mercy. For the just distribution of the wealth of the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear and have mercy. For the people of God, that with Blessed Mary, Blessed Mary Magdalene, and all the saints, we may rejoice as children and heirs of God, Redeemed by Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear and have mercy. For the needs of the world at this time, for our leaders, for those who lead us in public health, for doctors, nurses, and caregivers, for those who are performing essential services, 
for those who are isolated, for those who are ill. We pray by name those known to this community who are in need of prayer, Rosie, Kathy, Lillian, Reed, Scott, Patricia, Liz, Heather, Sam, Tiffany, Joan, Dorothy, Uni, Sadie, Jason and Tara, Doug, Helen, Beverly, Allegio, and Joseph. And I invite you, in the silence of your hearts, or aloud, to add the names of others who are in need of prayer at this time. that all may know the presence and grace of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear and help us. For those who have died, for those who have died in recent days around the world because of the virus, for those who have died in other circumstances, for those whose lives are upended daily by war, terror, and violence. We pray especially at this time for the repose of the soul of Robert McCord, priest, and we name aloud or silently any others in need who have died, that they may rest in peace and rise with Christ in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear the For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear the heavens. Together with Blessed Mary, Blessed Joseph, Blessed Mary Magdalene, and all the saints, and offering ourselves and one another to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear and help us. O God, we rejoice in your salvation, for the Spirit brought to life in Mary, the one who saved your people from their sins. Send the Spirit on your church to quicken all that is buried in us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with our Spirit.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty God. Lord, receive the sacrifice of thy hands, to the praise and glory of its holy name, to our benefit and that of all this holy church. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given thy church to be established in the incarnation of thy only Son, grants that in all things we may accept thy holy will, and with the ever blessed Virgin Mary, being full of grace, may rejoice in thy salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Take, eat, 
This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance.
The angel of the Lord brought tidings to Mary. And she was conceived by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, the Lord of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto thee according, according to thy word. word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, 
Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, and that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. We beseech thee, O Lord, pour thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought under the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 